So that leads us into the next section, again, slightly um, in a roundabout way, but it does lead, lead us to it, I promise. Um, and this takes us to the process of hypothesis testing. So once we've designed a study, if we're undergoing a research project, and we've designed a study and we've collected the data, then there's a certain process that we need to follow. And this is taken from your Top Hat textbook. Um, and this process just tells us all the different steps that are involved in trying to work out if we have evidence to support our research hypothesis or not. So the first step here you can see is to state the claim, the claim being our research hypothesis. What is the particular prediction that we're making? And also to identify, to, to write out the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. We also need to talk about what the level or to decide what the level of significance is, which is represented by alpha. It's a Greek, Greek symbol alpha. And I'm going to explain more at the, at, towards the end of the lecture today what I mean by that. That's what, the, what kind of the rest of the lecture is talking about. We then want to talk about what the appropriate test statistic is, given the particular research question we have, given the particular design of the experiment and the measurement level of our variables. And then we need to go through the actual process of doing a statistical test. And the rest of the steps here um, involve null hypothesis significance testing, which is the specific process that we undergo when we do statistical testing. And that's quite a specific process and how we undergo that process depends on what particular tests we're doing. But the overall process itself as represented by the slide is the same regardless of what the actual test is we're doing. So null hypothesis significance testing. What this is doing, what this is allowing us to do um, is essentially just the same as what I was explaining earlier today and previous in previous lectures, what we're trying to achieve by doing a research project. So what we're trying to do is to gather data from a sample to see if it's reflecting an effect in a wider population to see if we can make some kind of contribution to our field of knowledge, to a body of knowledge, to a body of an understanding of a phenomenon. So remember that through the research process, we're trying to find out something new about the world, about people, because that's what psychology is all about. And undergoing the research process allows us to get a new piece of information that we didn't previously know before. So what null hypothesis significance testing does is it allows us to undertake that process. It's a, it's a specific process that allows us to answer that question about whether the evidence that we see in our sample is likely reflecting a real effect in our population. And an important thing to note is that null hypothesis significance testing is a conservative approach. And what I mean by that is it errs on the side of caution that we don't want to be too liberal to conclude that we found an effect or to conclude that we found a relationship or to conclude that we found a difference between groups. It's quite a conservative approach to try and not make the mistake of saying that we've got an effect when actually one doesn't exist in the population. And how it does that is to begin by assuming that our null hypothesis is true and then to test to see if we have evidence that's not consistent with the null hypothesis. So it begins by assuming that the null hypothesis of no effect, of no relationship, of no difference between the groups, we assume that that's true. And then we evaluate the data that we've got to see if there's evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Do we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis? How we actually do that is by summarizing the data that we've collected and to compute what's called a test statistic. And the test statistic is just a number that comes from the data that we've collected. Um, and we, we look at the value of that number to see how likely it is that we have obtained this particular value of our test statistic if the null hypothesis is true. And I'm going to say that a bunch more times because that's a really fundamental point of this particular process. The value of the test statistic itself, the actual number that we get, reflects the effect that we're analyzing. So if our effect is looking at a difference between two groups, the value of the test statistic represents how big the difference between the groups is. If the effect we're analyzing is a relationship between two variables, then the value of the test statistic is representing the strength of that relationship. 
So if our test statistic is zero, if the actual number is zero, then there's literally no effect in our sample, which means that there is very likely no effect in our population. The bigger the test statistic, the further away from zero it is, the more likely there is some effect in our sample that's representing some effect in the population. And the actual process that we're going through by obtaining what's called the statistical significance of a test statistic is to evaluate how likely it is, how probable it is, that we've obtained this particular test statistic if the null hypothesis is true. So how likely is it that we've obtained this particular effect in our sample, this particular effect in our data, how likely is it that we have this effect if the null hypothesis is true? If the null hypothesis of no effect in the population is true? When we go through this process, even though I said before that the conservative approach of null hypothesis significance testing begins by assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the details behind the actual statistical testing itself means that we can't actually ever accept the null hypothesis. All we do is to see if we can either reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis. So we never conclude that we accept the null hypothesis. All we can do if we don't reject the null hypothesis is to conclude that we don't have enough strong evidence to see if the null hypothesis is true or not. So I've said before that that's, that, that's the process of inferential statistical testing, null hypothesis significance testing. And the idea of probability and the normal distribution is really fundamental to that. And this is the slide that hopefully links all that together. So what we can actually obtain, the, an actual number that we can obtain when we're doing these statistical tests is a number that represents the probability that we've obtained this particular test statistic if the null hypothesis of no effect is true. What is the likelihood that we've obtained this particular test statistic if the null hypothesis of no effect in the population is true? And we can use the information about the normal distribution to help us make that, to help us get evidence about that specific probability, about that precise probability in any particular instance. And the reason for that is that we have information about the probability of obtaining a particular test statistic value, a particular number, which is our test statistic, under the null hypothesis. So what I mean by that is that test statistics, the kind of test statistics we're talking about, follow a certain kind of distribution under the null hypothesis. So if the null hypothesis of no effect is true, then we have information about how likely it is that any particular test statistic we've obtained, we would get, we would see in a particular sample. And we can use that information to see if we have, inform if we have enough evidence or if we have the degree of evidence, the degree of certainty to reject our null hypothesis. So because the distribution of test statistics under the null hypothesis is predictable because it follows a, a predictable distribution, a predictable pattern, then we can know how likely it is that we've obtained any particular value of the test statistic if the null hypothesis of no effect is true. And that's really the process of statistical inference is that we can get what's called a p-value, a p-value standing for standing for probability, a probability value that correspond to our particular test statistic. And those p-values tell us the probability, the likelihood, the chance that we have obtained this particular test statistic, that we've obtained this particular effect in our sample, this particular pattern of data, if the null hypothesis is true. So what is the likelihood that we get this certain result, we get this particular result, 
if there is no relationship between the variables in the population, if there's no difference between the groups in the population, if there's no effect in the population, because remember, that's what the null hypothesis says. It says that there's no effect, there's no relationship. The, so as I said before, the test statistic we get is a certain number, it's a particular value. The bigger the test statistic is, bigger meaning further away from zero, the smaller the p-value that corresponds to that test statistic is. And the smaller the p-value, the less likely the chance that we obtain this particular result if the null hypothesis is true. Therefore, the more likely it is that the null hypothesis is not true and therefore the stronger the support for the alternate hypothesis. So that's a really important thing. I'm going to say that again. The bigger our test statistic, the smaller our p-value that goes along with that test statistic is. And the smaller the p-value, the less likely it is that we've obtained this particular result if the null hypothesis is true. Therefore, the more likely it is that we can reject the null hypothesis and therefore, the more likely it is that we have support for our alternate hypothesis. And the process of undertaking that, the process of using the p-value, p-value representing the probability that we've obtained any particular result if the null hypothesis is true, that's essentially what we do when we're testing for statistical significance. So if you've seen papers or if you've seen reports or if you've seen something talk about the statistical significance, that's what they're referring to.